Okay, this is Getting Real with Hillary, and I am going to experiment. It'll be a certain number of steps to use when you are doubting yourself, okay? So the first step, the first question is, what are you doubting? Okay, so I was doubting yesterday that, um, all right, I'm just going to be honest, folks. My ex-husband didn't have a place to live, and... I, he was kind of hinting around that he could stay with me, with my son, um, because background, they were living with my mother. She's coming back from Pennsylvania. She's 90 years old and nobody wanted to infect her. She's coming back tomorrow. So all of a sudden they decided they had to move out. My son is coming here. My ex, I thought had a place to go. It turns out he didn't. So he was saying, don't worry, I can live in my car don't worry, I'll live in the unfinished house without plumbing. And I didn't say anything. And then finally I said, look, I'm not going to ask you to stay here. If your happiness was more important than mine, I would, but it's not. So I'm not. And he said something like, well, you know, if I, whatever, whatever he said got me triggered. And I just said, no. Now, that's what happened. What, so then, so I was very proud of myself. And then later I start thinking, so this is what was I questioning? Am I a bad person? Am I selfish? Am I a cold hearted bitch? Now, that's what I was questioning. Now, is that familiar? Yes. If you read my book, you will see that a lot of my marriage with this man somehow I ended up not doing things that were good for me, but because I felt guilty or felt sorry for him or something. Okay. So it is familiar. And let's see. I talked to friends and I said, did I do the right thing? And they said, absolutely. So that could be a step. You could ask for reassurance. That could be a step, right? I'm writing it down. Ask for reassurance. Everyone said I did the right thing. And there's something in here that, okay, so, 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 so I guess, I guess the fifth thing could be, what am I trying to avoid? Being a bad person or a selfish person or someone who isn't caring about others, okay? Now, someone who knows that can take advantage of it. And this person, my ex, three years ago, when he told my mother that he was going to end up living in the car, in his car, she allowed him to stay in her house. And he's been there for three years. So I was, you know, I was, now someone else could look at this and go, are you crazy? He's a grown man. You know, if he chooses not to want to spend money or not to take a job that can pay him money and keep having these business deals that he's working on that never happen. You know, that's his choice. It's not my problem, right? That's what someone said. He's not my problem. We've been divorced five years. He's literally not my problem. So why do I get sucked into thinking I have to be nice or take care of him or something like that? That's enabling him. That's not having him be a stronger person. It's allowing him to continue the status quo. And it's fine. He can live that way for the rest of his life. But I don't even know why I'm twisted about this. So I'm working it out as I talk. Um, why would I think it's my problem? I mean, if it was a relative, if it was my kids, if it was my mom... I take her in, but he's not. He's my ex husband. If he was sick, if he was unable, 
to work. If he was unable, that's another story, but he is able. And by allowing him to stay for free in all these places, he doesn't have to do anything. So I don't know if I've made any sense. I'm still working it out. Why I even feel bad. I guess, I guess being good or seeming nice, or it's like the pretense that getting real is all about and not being that, um, you know, not pretending I'm a good person. I mean, I'm good when I'm good and I'm bad when I'm bad, like all of us, but it's to be able to be real. I work hard. I have my own place. I pay for it. Everyone can do that. And the fact that he doesn't, that's his choice, right? All right. So there's still a little bit of peace. There's still a little bit <laughs> that I'm not quite free about, but that's okay. I'll use it again. Maybe these steps are not the right steps. If I record again and get them clearer, I will. If anyone has any insight for me that you, I'm sure other people can see like, whoa, are you blind? Yeah, I'm a little blind after living with this person for 20 years. And, you know, if you read the book, The Second Piece of French Toast, available on Amazon, you will see um, where I was, um, where I kept, I guess it was, I was believing him. Okay, here it is, folks. I was believing him and not trusting myself. So my self knows, do not let him come. Mm -mm, that would be bad. That's my real self. And then my little girl brain is like, yeah, but you have to have people like you. You have to have people think you're good and nice or they'll leave. Well, time for me to trust my real self. So thank you. I guess that would be step six. Trust yourself. All right, folks, these are now the six steps to use when you're doubting yourself. It's not quick. It's not easy, but it works. So thank you. I feel much better. I can trust myself. I'm a big girl now. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe. The website will be live Monday. Uh, getting that's getting real with Hillary.com. Don't forget the book available on Amazon, the second piece of French toast. It's a great read. Someone's reading it right now. She's like, wow, so awesome. And the planning genie, if you have an idea, purpose, or passion that you want to explore, get clear on and get into action. Uh, you can fill out the form. You'll be able to on my website. So I look forward to hearing from you. Have a great day.